Welcome to OpenBXRX on BronxNet. I'm your host, Sanji Lopez, inviting you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. When was the last time you voted? Why are you voting in this election? What are the issues that most concern the Bronx? And why should Bronx sites vote? These are all questions that Everyday Bronx wants you to answer through their latest project, hashtag Bronx Votes, encouraging you to make your voice heard this election season. Joining us now to share more about this project and invite you to participate is Raina M. Santos. She is the curator at Everyday Bronx. Welcome, Raina. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Of course. For those who are not familiar, please give us a little bit of background on Everyday Project and Everyday Bronx. So um, Everyday Projects originated with Everyday Africa, which was started by journalists and photographers Austin Merrill and Peter DeCampo. They started the Instagram account to challenge the stereotypes commonly seen in media about Africa, and they used documentary photography to show a more realistic depiction of the everyday life in Africa. Um, the account became incredibly popular and inspirational, and other photographers started accounts to fight stereotypes about where they lived. And through the years, it has evolved to a global community of photographers that try to convey a more accurate view of daily life around the world. Now there are over 60 official everyday accounts and counting. Everyday Bronx started the summer of 2014. I got the feed in October of that year. And when I got the account, it only had 1,007 followers. But today we have 39,700 followers. We're only 300 followers away from 40,000. And this project is really important to me because it allows us to help weave a more accurate story of the real Bronx through documentary style photos. Historically, as you know, the Bronx has been plagued with incredibly negative stereotypes. Everyday Bronx attempts to fight those destructive representations with a more accurate view of the beauty and strength of the people who live here. And I call what we do corrective storytelling. The unique thing about our feed is that compared to other Everyday Project feeds, our content is made up 100% by our followers. So basically, Bronx sites are telling their own story by using the hashtag Everyday Bronx. And it's an authentic story, you know, because we live here because, and you know, that shares the authentic stories of everyone living in the community. So I love that, you know, that sets the Everyday Bronx page apart from every other page. And it's so unique and encouraging to see um, Bronx sites participate in these photo projects through Everyday Bronx. Um, you just told me, Rina, uh, Rina, who is behind the Everyday Bronx page. Um, uh, who are the photographers also that go around um, the Bronx to photograph uh, different communities? I work with an amazing group of talented photographers and Bronxites, and the Everyday Bronx team is made up of five people. Uh, I myself am the director, but uh, we also have photographer Edgar Santana, Cynthia Ciccone, Heriberto Sanchez, and our latest addition to the team, Kayla Beltran. Wonderful. I think I know some of those names, too. I'm familiar with some of the photographers behind the page, and I always see them post about it on their own pages as well. Um, I love the page, and I think everyone should check it out. Before we continue, please follow Everyday Bronx on social media at Everyday Bronx to check out what we're discussing right now. Raina, can you tell us about how Everyday Bronx is encouraging Bronx sites to vote through the hashtag Bronx Vote Project? What is it, and how can people participate this election season? Excellent question. So, Basically, recognizing the power of social media, we wanted to show empowered Bronx sites taking part in this election and to encourage others to vote, especially young people and first time voters. We want to show Bronx sites how easy it is to vote and what voting means in this historic election. We want to move people to act because it is in their own best interest to vote and get involved in what happens in their community. And the project is only a week and a half old and we've already produced the highest liked image of everyday Bronx history. So people are really engaging with Bronx vote. Right. Rana, can you share which image that was? And also um, tell us about another hashtag Bronx vote submission so far and what these posts represent. So there are two photos that I really think about that have really high, been highlighted um, during Bronx vote. And the first one is by a Bronx, um, Everyday Bronx member, which is Cynthia Ciccone. 
She is a teacher and a photographer as well. And she took a photo of herself in front of the school where she teaches. And basically, you know, she wrote that she is voting this year because she wants to be a positive example for her students. Basically, you know, she doesn't want to say, she wants to do and to show by example and to give that kind of representation for young adults. And, you know, the photo really resonated, you know, as, as an essential worker, she is putting her life on the line every day, teaching Bronx kids, educating them. And so I think people really responded to her photo. And the second photo that um, really has resonated with our followers is by photographer and nurse Sandra Ayala. Her image is of her house. And um, she put up these three flags. She put up a, a Black Lives Matter flag, a Puerto Rican black and white resistance flag, and a F Trump 2020 flag. Her family really wanted to respond to the large amount of Trump flags that are being put up all around Throg's Neck. And the thing is, is that it wasn't, it hadn't been even 24 hours since she put up the flags where um, during, in community Facebook groups, she, her, she and her family were being called trash. And the local news actually came to her home and was asking her how she felt about her neighbors being so furious about her flags. And so this photo as of last night has gotten 2,824 likes and 188 comments, the most we've ever had on the feed for any one photo. And you can really tell how people are really engaging with this year's election, how important it is, and you know, how people get to express, you know, their own beliefs. She's actually been threatened, you know, and intimidated by her, her neighbors. So this is an incredibly important issue. Right. And um, right now the page opens that discussion, you know, with the state of the borough, the state of our borough here in the Bronx and how politics are kind of divided within our borough in and of itself. And, you know, with that being said, can you please remind us, Ryan, of what this election truly means to the Bronx and how we can all collectively engage and increase voter literacy, voter registration and voter turnout cross generationally here in the Bronx? Well, in this historic election, a lot is at stake, not just for Bronxites and New Yorkers, but for our entire country. Issues like COVID-19 impact, immigration, healthcare, employment, and criminal justice reform are all on the table. That is why understanding the voting process is important so you can participate and have a say on how you're represented in your community and in your country. So we're posting voting information daily on our Instagram stories so people know what to do to vote. Um, I don't know if you know this, but Bronx uh, voter registration has dropped 59% from 2016. And we especially want to encourage young people to register to vote. Over 400,000 young people in New York City are not registered and their concerns and needs need to be counted too. And also we all know people that because of one reason or another, can't vote here. For example, Puerto Ricans who live on the island can vote. So when you cast your ballot, know that you're voting for all of those who can't vote. Let their voices be heard too. And more importantly, let's also remember, early voting starts October 24th and election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. All very important dates. Thank you, Raina, for sharing with our viewers. Um, before we go, I wanted to ask you how viewers can follow Everyday Bronx and also participate in the Bronx Votes pro, um, Project. But before that, I actually wanted to ask you the impact that social media has on this election, right? Um, because Everyday Bronx is using social media in order to post these images and get people engaged, just tell us about the impact of, of the digital space, the digital realm during the election season. So much is happening online, digitally, and we know that that is where most of us are really communicating, especially now during this world pandemic where we have to practice social distancing. And so a lot of these communications are happening online and people are engaging. And especially, I really do see a lot of young people being more politically minded now because as we can see, young people have lost so much because of this pandemic, high school graduations, first years in college. Um, a lot of their families have been affected so much. And so it's important to use all of these um, situations and experiences and trying to really be able to put that um, energy into something positive 
like voting, like being able to use your power to really shape your community and to really shape your future. And so I think that social media is an incredible tool. Everyday Bronx, I love the Everyday Projects because it is about equity. Everyday Bronx is about photos on your telephone. And most people have a telephone. And I think it's important that, you know, people should express themselves artistically, not just people that have super expensive cameras, but everybody, all of us. And I love that about the Everyday Projects because you can take a photo of anything that moves you and be able to post it on Instagram and to be able to have a say in like, this is how I look at my surroundings today. This is the kind of everyday experience that I have, which is very different than the everyday experience that is talked about when it comes to, to the Bronx. So I love social media. And I think we should really lean into what we have available at our fingertips instead of keep saying and, you know, and thinking about what we don't have right now. Let's think about what we do have and how lucky we have to have it and to be able to continue to converse and encourage each other. Absolutely. Thank you, Rhino, for that. Let's invite our viewers to participate in the hashtag Bronx Vote Project and vote in this election. I would love for you to follow Everyday Bronx. On Instagram, we are only 300 followers away from 40,000, which would be huge for us. We want to feature you. So please use the hashtag Bronx Vote to share your photos and tell us what you're voting in this election. And let's make our voices be heard. Thank you, Rhino. Folks, you heard it here. Um, you can follow at Everyday Bronx on social media, participate in their hashtag Bronx Vote Project. Take those photos of what voting looks like to you this election season here in the Bronx and share your story. Let your voice be heard this election season. We'll be right back. <laughs> 